Hey, James and Jazz here, excited to be bringing you another spiritual video. And today we're going to be talking about fruits of the Spirit. So we just last week did a video on love, which happens to be one of the fruits of the Spirit. That's this right. week we're really going to focus on the fruits of the Spirit. Um, and uh, why is it important to be familiar with the fruits of the Spirit? Well, really because Jesus exemplified the fruits of the Spirit and we're called to be Christ-like. So the Bible talks about that, to strive to be Christ-like, to strive for that perfection. We may not ever actually attain that, but we're to strive for that. And Jesus completely rep uh, represented what the fruits of the Spirit are, which we're going to dive into in a little bit. We'll go through those scriptures. but um, It's a very famous passage of scripture yep. for the Christians. So we're taking a break from our Bible studies so that way we can focus on these topics here that can really help you grow in your walk. Yeah, yeah, and we're, today, the goal really is to check yourself. This is a great checklist for yourself. As you're reading that, you can be like, does that represent me? Does that represent me? Does that represent me? As we're going through the fruits of the Spirit. So you may recognize, or maybe you're watching this with your spouse, and you guys can have a moment to just sit and you can ask that question, honey, what do I need to work on? I'd like to receive that, you know, that, uh, what, what do you call it, a uh, evaluation? I don't yeah. know. Um, because it's important that we strive to better ourselves in these areas. So, um, and that's also how you can recognize someone else. The Bible says you will know them by their fruit. So when you right. uh, begin to date someone, uh, you need to check that fruit in that individual. That's one way that you're going to know that they have a relationship with Christ Jesus if they're working on those fruits of the Spirit. So That's correct. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, we're going to move on. We're actually going to read Matthew 7, 15 through 20, which says, Beware of false prophets who come, in, who come to you in sheep's clothing, but outwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Inwardly. Inwardly, oh, sorry. So beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly, inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits, which is what I just talked about. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. So that's super important, as I was saying, especially when you're considering dating someone, when you're uh, perhaps picking the types of friends that you want to hang out with, be checking the fruits of the Spirit and those people you're spending the most time with. Yeah, that passage of Scripture really clearly states that the fruit that people are bearing in their lives are not a lie. Mm -hmm. Maybe what they're saying is the lie. There's like, I'm a Christian, yeah. but then you look at the fruit in their life, which is their actions, their decisions, and it's contradictory. The fruit isn't the liar. Mm -hmm. The fruit shows the truth. Yeah. And so that is a great passage of scripture using discernment when it says that people come to you in sheep's clothing. We know that sheep represent innocent, pure yeah. animals that are just kind of lackadaisical, doing whatever they want. Yeah. And the ravenous wolves, the inwardly these people are ravenous wolves, meaning they're not going to tell you that. Mm -hmm. They aren't necessarily going to show it because the sheep is the disguise. Inwardly their heart is what is the ravenous wolf. And so you have to have spiritual discernment. But I just want to elaborate on that and say that what you do speak so loudly that what you say I cannot hear. Yeah. So their actions go by the actions in people's lives, not by their words. Their words yeah. can be empty. Yeah. So we're going to read two sections here of scripture. And we want you to take an inventory of yourself, like we talked about, but also yeah. take an inventory of who you surround yourself with daily, with your close friends and your family members, maybe who you're considering dating. Run them through this checklist. Yeah. Maybe don't let them know you're doing it, but like mm -hmm. secretly think about their lives and say, do I see this in their life? Do I see that in their life? Be honest. Don't be in denial. Be yeah. honest. 
and see which section best describes you or those people that you're looking at. So, and yes, which by the way, I, I, I want to say, and yes, by the way, people will have a bad day. They're not always yeah. going to be perfect yeah. in the area of representing all of the fruits of the Spirit perfectly well. It's You're going to have a bad day, but if you continue to see the same pattern over and over and over again, that's that's what we're talking about. Right. So we're going to focus on the fruit of people that are not in the kingdom of God, and then we're going to focus on the fruit of people that are in the kingdom of God. So which fruit are you bearing? Yeah. We're starting in Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 21. I advise you to obey only the Holy Spirit's instructions. He will tell you where to go and what to do, and then you won't always be doing the wrong things your evil nature wants you to do. For we naturally love to do evil things that are just the opposite from the things that the Holy Spirit tells us to do. And the good things we want to do when the Holy Spirit has His way with us are just the opposite of our natural desires. These two forces within us are constantly fighting each other to win control over us, and our wishes are never free from their pressures. When you are guided by the Holy Spirit, you need no longer force yourself to obey Jewish laws. Here's the fruit. Mm -hmm. But when you follow your own wrong inclinations, your lives will produce these evil results. Impure thoughts, eagerness for lustful pleasure, idolatry, spiritism, that is encouraging the activity of demons. That could be Ouija boards, mm -hmm. fortune tellers. Idolatry also is not just worshiping a, a bronze calf or a golden statue. It's how many followers? You're obsessed with power, money, yep, all that stuff. Yep. Um, hatred and fighting, jealousy and anger, constant effort to get the best for yourself, complaints and criticisms, the feeling that everyone else is wrong except those in your own little group, and there will be wrong doctrine. You're going to be deceived. Envy, murder drunkenness, wild parties, and all that sort of thing. Let me tell you, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. So if you have that fruit in your life, okay, we need to make some changes. If yep. people in your life that you surround yourself with have that sort of fruit, you need to make some changes because you yep. become like who you hang around. Yep. So now we're going to talk about the opposite side <coughs> of things. When you are a child of God, you should have this fruit. And this is Galatians 5, chap uh, chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. But when the Holy Spirit controls our lives, He will produce this kind of fruit in us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And here there is no conflict with Jewish laws. So with what you just heard, take an inventory of yourself, your friends, who you're yeah. dating, your family members, and see which section best describes you and those people. So which fruit are you honestly bearing? And hopefully the answer is the second set of characteristics. <laughs> so what we're going to do today is we're going to break each one down one by one and give examples because we are called to be set apart. We're called to be looking differently from the world. We don't want to blend in and just go along with the flow. Yep. So I do want to quickly point out that that verse that I just read, it says, but when the Holy Spirit controls our lives, then we'll produce love, peace, patience, all those things. Mm -hmm. It says when the Holy Spirit controls our lives. That doesn't mean that we live for the world on Friday night and we live for Jesus on Sunday morning. Yeah. That's not the Holy Spirit controlling our life. The Holy Spirit controlling our life is doing every thought, every word, every action. We are trying to mold ourselves to look more and more like Jesus. Yep. So that's when the fruits of the Spirit will be evident in your life, is when you're fully surrendered to Jesus, not sitting on the fence halfway in the world, halfway serving God. Mm -hmm. God doesn't like lukewarm people lukewarm Christians in the Bible in Revelation it says he will spit them out yeah. so just be aware of that and if you are honest with yourself and you think that you're being lukewarm and you're halfway serving the world halfway serving God 
maybe that's why you're not seeing the full fruits of the Spirit very evident and clear in your life. Yeah. If people think that, if they would be surprised if you told them that you're a Christian, yeah, that's a good sign that the fruits of the Spirit aren't very evident. Yeah, so. that's good. So we're going to read that again. I'll read in the Li Living Bible Version, so Galatians 5, through 23. But when the Holy Spirit controls our lives, He will produce this kind of fruit in us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Mm -hmm. And here, there is no conflict with Jewish laws. So, the most important one is actually the very first one. Yeah. Love. And um, if you check last week, you'll see we did a whole video on love. So, I encourage you to go back to last week, learn what is love. Yes. And we really dove in deep. And um, well, first, uh, I'll read that actually. What is love? Because that's what you want to know right now. Yeah. So 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It, it, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. So really another great opportunity to do an inventory. Ask your wife or whoever you spend the most time with, you know, what areas can I work on a little bit? You know, are you keeping record of wrongs whenever there's an argument? Are you bringing up the, oh, but remember you did that one thing and then, you know, what are you being patient with? the other individual, whoever that may be. Um, so really great way to just check that list and be like, man, I, I know I need to work on this area. And Lord, give me the strength to work on that area of patience. Give me strength to work on that area of just trust or hope. Yeah. So, um, so good. There's so much to it. That's mm -hmm. why we just did a video on it. <laughs> yeah, a lot. It was a pretty long video, a yeah. little longer than we expected. Um, but 1 John 4 also talks about how God is love. The definition of love, God is love. So, and how can we, one way that I guess I would say God showed that he is love is through John 3, 16, which says, For God so loved the world that he gave. Yeah. He gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So God right. gave his one and only son. And Jesus gave his life to die on the cross for our sins so that we could have eternal life, so we could be forgiven of our wrongdoings. So yeah. Jesus on the cross is that agape, unconditional love. And we do in that video, that love video, what is love? We break down the different kinds of love because when I say I love, you know, Pizza Hut or ice cream or whatever, it's a little different than I love my wife. Those, those loves look a little bit differently. So Jesus is that agape love. If you want to learn about the other two types of love, I just encourage you to check out that video. You won't regret it. Yes. So love is the most important. Yeah. Because I think um, verse 13 says, but the greatest of these is love. Mm -hmm. So that is the most important one that you want to work on in your life. Yeah. But the fruits of the Spirit continue on with joy. Yeah. So this one is great. Like You want to be a joyful person. Yeah. Um, Nehemiah 8.10 says, For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yeah. I think the world has this backwards a lot of time where they think, oh, the size of my bank account is my strength. Mm. The number of followers I have is my strength. It's like, no, yeah. for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Is the Lord your strength? If so, if you're putting your trust, your hope in Jesus, you're going to be joyful. And you're like, okay, well, that's not what I really see a lot of Christians emulating. Okay, well, you have to actually be fully surrendered and fully trusting God in yeah. order to have that joy. But joy, um, these humans are not, I guess, what's the word I'm thinking of? They don't escape the pressures or the conflicts or the persecutions of this world. They still have bad circumstances happening in their lives. So my point with that is joy is not happiness. It's two separate things. Mm -hmm. 
Happiness is based on circumstances. So you might feel happy when you're on vacation, when you're not stressed out from work, when all the relationships in your life are in harmony, when your bank account's overflowing, like when everything's going your way, you feel happy. But joy is independent of circumstances, meaning you can be in the worst circumstances in the world and still have joy. That was evident in the Bible from Paul, where he wrote the book of Philippians, which we're going to start doing Bible studies on soon. But he wrote the book of Philippians, which is considered to be the most joyful book in the Bible. And where did he write it? In prison. Dark, ugly, damp prisons chained to the wall with animal rodents all over. Yeah, things didn't look too happy circumstances anyway. So he was saying, though, to count at all joy. Yeah. So it's like you can see the contradiction where a lot of times people in the world think happiness and joy are synonymous, meaning they're the same thing. No, they're different. That's why Christians can have joy no matter what. And how is that the case? It's because of what Jesus did for us when we have the assurance of our eternal salvation in Jesus, where the world can't touch our our eternal salvation. Yeah, it's true. So the word of God gives us joy. We know that we win. We Mm -hmm. are on the winning team. Amen. God wins. We can read the end of the book in Revelation and God wins. The devil's trying to throw a fit and bring as many people down with him in the meantime, but we know that we win as Christians, and we have sure salvation in Jesus Christ. We really do. Jeremiah 15, verse 16 says, When your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight, for I bear your name, Lord God Almighty. So these words in here are supposed to give you joy. Why do they give you joy? Because they show you your true identity. They show you all the promises of God. They show you God's love for you and how Mm -hmm. much he loved you, that he came to earth to die for you. So that gives you joy. 1 Peter 1 verse 8 says, And even now you are happy with the inexpressible joy that comes from heaven itself. Joy comes from heaven. You really see that. You don't see joy on the world, really. I mean, there's a lot of people miserable living Mm -hmm. in the world system. But there is inexpressible joy that comes from heaven. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of his Holy Spirit. So you're supposed to be filled with all joy. Yeah. Filled, not just like trickling little pieces of joy here and there. You should be filled with joy. So, and this type of joy can't be understood by people in the world because they only know happiness. They only uh, measure their happiness based on their circumstances in their lives. Yeah. So they don't understand the inexpressible type of joy that us Christians have. But it is magnetic to these unbelievers who can't understand why we're so joyful in trying times. And that's why we look different than the world. Yeah. I like that. Don't let those joy jackers come into your life. Watch who you're surrounded by. Mm -hmm. My pastor from L.A. used to always say, stay away from those joy jackers. That's funny. So, um, but yeah, the next one, our third one is peace. So, um, that's the next fruit of the Spirit, and I love how you had just mentioned in Romans fifteen thirteen. may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you yep. trust in Him. So that's powerful. I mean, a lot of times unbelievers just don't understand it. if you're a Christian who is grounded in, in Christ and you trust in Him, that in stressful circumstances uh, and frustrating circumstances, whatever that may be, they're expecting you to be stressed out and worried and you're standing on solid ground in peace. They don't understand that because they don't have a relationship with Christ Jesus. So um, the joy of the, well, the joy of the Lord is our strength, but I'm trying, I'm talking about peace, sorry. But what I wanted to say is Jesus, uh, God is known as Jehovah Shalom, our peace. So when we have a relationship with our peace, 
when Christ dwelt with the Holy Spirit dwells within us, we have peace instilled in us. We just have to reach for that peace and trust in God through all of the circumstances. Some, right. some really great scriptures that we can look at on this um, are Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds yes. in Christ Jesus. That peace will guard your heart and it will guard your mind. Amen. That's awesome. I love that. Um, and then the next one we can look at is John 16, 33. It says, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace in the world you will have tribulation. It's going to happen. We, whether you're a Christian or not, you're going to experience tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. So as we already talked about, victory is already in Jesus. No matter what the circumstance is, even if it's something that takes you to your grave, have peace because you know where you're going. You know Christ Jesus. He's already overcome the world. So that peace dwells within you. And then again, I already, I already read it uh, again, which is what Jazz read, uh, Romans 15, 13, may the God of hope uh, fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and also if we think about the antonym of peace, we think of fear. Yeah. The opposite of peace is fear. Mm -hmm. And in 2 Timothy 4, 7, I think that's the scripture. It says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound, sound mind. mind. Yeah. A sound mind is a peaceful mind. <clears throat> so yep. just be aware of that. Yep. So if you're stressed out or you're anxious or you're fearful, that's not of God. And God wants you to cast all your cares on him for he cares for you. He wants you to be yeah. at peace. So the next fruit of the spirit which is hopefully evident in your life is patience <laughs> but this is something that all of us need to work on in this yeah. microwavable society meaning we want it and we want it now yeah never pray a prayer asking god to give you patience because he'll test it for you <laughs> <laughs> i'll put you behind the slowest driver that's right someone who doesn't know how to do a roundabout or someone taking your sweet sweet time yeah that's right <laughs> but we're talking about patience. It's important um, to know that good things take time. A lot of good things take time. It takes time to get to know the voice of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. A lot of times you don't know the voice of the Holy Spirit overnight. It takes time to learn His voice by learning what the Word of God says. And mm. then when you have thoughts coming through your mind, you run them through the filter of the Bible to see yeah. if it exalts itself against the knowledge of the Word of God, yeah. or if it lines up with the Bible. The Holy Spirit will never contradict what the Word says. It also takes time to learn or to grow in your walk with God. Absolutely. Yeah. It takes time to learn to trust God as well. <laughs> and you learn to trust God when you see His faithfulness, yeah. which is one of the fruits of the Spirit. But um, that doesn't happen overnight as well, I would no. say. So it took so many people in the Bible so many years before they saw their promises fulfilled and answered. If you think about it, David, King David was 17 when he was anointed king of Israel, but he didn't actually get crowned king until he was 30. Yeah. That's a long time to wait. And he just had to trust God. He had to trust that God would fulfill the promise that he told him and that his timing was perfect. Yeah. Another example, Abraham was roughly 75 years old when the first mention of his son was promised, and he was 100 years old when Isaac was actually born. That's a long time. Yeah. But we have to remember that God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than ours, meaning the way he does things doesn't necessarily need to make sense to us. We just mm -hmm. have to trust him. But trust takes time to build. Just like it takes time in the natural to build trust between you and a human being, mm -hmm. whether it's a friendship or a relationship, it takes time to build trust. Same thing with God. 
So there is a waiting season in every believer's life, and that's when your faith roots get deep and strong. Yeah. So be patient with one another as well. I think yeah. a lot of times our patience can wear thin with other people and with ourselves, but we're talking about other people right now because we need to be patient with them because God's patient with us as well. And we want to show fruit to the Spirit. So if we're impatient with people. They're going to be not turned on by that. Yeah. So God is patient with us whether we realize it or not. He's so patient with us that He is willing to wait for us to come to salvation and give us time to repent. So 2 Peter 3 verse 9 says, The Lord is not slow concerning His promise as some count slowness, but He is patient with us. Because he does not want any to perish, but all to come to repentance. Amen. He's patient, giving everyone an opportunity to hear the gospel and to repent and acknowledge <coughs> that they are sinners in need of a Savior, Jesus Christ. We need to be patient with people that we love in our lives that are maybe walking opposite of the Word of God, the will of God. And you're like, why can't you get this through your brain that you are making bad decisions? <laughs> so we would call this... Like the prodigal, the story of the prodigal son in the Bible in yeah. the book of Luke. Read that story. It's awesome. Um, 2 Timothy 4 verse 2 part B says, Correct and rebuke your people when they need it. Encourage them to do right and all the time be feeding them patiently with God's word. So just keep being consistent with them showing them love and presenting the Word of God to them, maybe encouraging mm -hmm. them to read their Bible or to pray or to go to church, knowing to encourage them to do things that you know will help them develop discernment, yeah. help them start making right decisions, help them get in line to be in the will of God. You can't control someone. They have free will. You can't override their free will. Mm -hmm. But you can patiently love them and help guide them. Um, and it takes time for someone to get the blinders off and not be deceived. Yeah. So just be patient and love God, love people into the kingdom of God. So yeah. by being patient. Yeah. And being patient is a really great way to show love. Definitely. And same with kindness, which we're about to go on to next. I mean, we kind of and, and in First Corinthians thirteen, it says, "Love is patient. Love is kind." So you're going to notice a lot of these fruits of the spirit are really a great way to show love, and they are in that definition of love yeah. uh, as we read in the Bible. So definitely. Um, so kindness and goodness is the next one we're going to take a look at. We're combining these two because they were kind of we like, didn't well, know they, the difference. They seem pretty much the same. So. Yeah. Um, we see in Romans 2, 4, it says, The goodness of God leads men to repentance. That, that's, uh, there's a song I really love that says, It's your kindness, Lord, that leads us to repentance. It's your faith. Yeah, anyways. So really, really good song um, and great scripture. So it's, it's God's goodness. It's not his rebuke and, you know, like other people, you know, they use hellfire and damnation and try to scare people and, and God's not scaring you to him. It's his kindness that leads uh, people to repentance. So, um, and then speaking the truth in love is another thing that I really want to talk about because when I lived in LA, I would work like the San Diego Comic Con and I would see people every year standing with picket signs and saying, you're going to hell, you're a sinner. And like, they wouldn't even know any of these people. It's like, people are just enjoying Comic-Con and you got people holding, you know, loud, you know, whatever you call Bullhorns. them. Bullhorns. Bullhorns, screaming out that people are going to hell. And I, I just don't, I mean, that might work for some people. I don't know how or why. I mean, everybody's different, but it's the kindness of God that leads people to repentance. So we could do, we could operate in the very same way, being kind and leading people to repentance and leading people to Jesus. So speak that truth, the truth of the word of God in love and love people into the kingdom. So that doesn't mean you stay quiet and no. let people walk all over you or let radical deceived people back you into corner and you can't say anything. That's yeah. not what that is. 
It's yeah. just speaking the truth, but not doing it in a rude, harsh way, I would yeah. say. Yeah. But people are going to always be offended with the truth if they're deceived and on the opposite side of God. Yeah, yeah not judging or condemning. I mean, the judge is God. Um, but yeah, I mean, and it works different in, in the faith. If there's another believer that you see is caught in a sin, it says go and restore them gently. And, mm -hmm. But somebody who doesn't know Jesus, they don't, they don't understand that stuff. So it's like lead them to Jesus in love um, and, and yeah. through kindness. So um, also another thing to think about with this kindness and goodness is how God blesses his children. And you think about the way that uh, parents give, give gifts to their kids and great scripture here. And that's, that's one way that parents are good, kind, and good to their children through giving them gifts, through blessing them with gifts. And in Matthew seven eleven, it says, if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Um, so we know how to do it. Of course, God knows how to do it. God operates in that, in that kindness and that goodness. And then we see in John 3, 16 is perhaps, that, well, that is by far, it is the greatest gift that you will ever receive um, is, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We already talked about this one, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God gave himself. He died on the cross for our sins so that we could have eternal life. There will never be a greater gift than that. Um, and then, Kindness and goodness. This is an outward expression shown to other people. This is how we outwardly show other people God's love. And then we can do that through what? Random acts of kindness. So paying for someone's gas is a great way to do that. Our pastor just recently challenged us like, hey, you know, when you're at the pump, just kind of look around you and just see if God will guide you. Yeah. You know, what person is he going to guide you to say, hey, here's 20 bucks. I just want to get your gas today. Jesus um, loves you. Yeah, Jesus loves you. Um, I know we've had people pay for, or I don't know if we've done it or have had people do it for us, like paying for the meal for the person behind us in the drive through mm -hmm. I've heard people doing that. I need to do that. That would be fun. Yeah, or, you know, getting somebody's, you know, coffee or yeah. whatever that may be. Yeah. Um, also, of course, random act of kindness, giving to the homeless, opening the door for the elderly, um, you know, maybe carrying the elderly's groceries to their car. Can I help you load that? Mm -hmm. uh, and this is a great one that Jazz talked about um, in our love video, treating the janitor the same way as you would treat the CEO. Don't show favoritism to one. Um, and then kindness is giving someone, uh, giving to someone when they have nothing that they can give you. When they, they you know, they can't give you anything in return. That's the great thing about going and feeding the homeless, it's, it's just truly a selfless act. You are showing God's love to them, and you're not expecting anything in return. You just want to love on them just as Christ wants to love on them. So, And it doesn't even have to be a something physical. If you think about someone who's down in the dumps and just needing encouragement, maybe they are like so down mentally yeah. that you just need to say an encouraging word to them. And they can't give anything back to you in that moment because they're so hurt and they're so broken. Yeah. But your kindness is going to help them. Yeah. So that costs nothing. Or if they're having a bad day, a smile is free, but it can definitely help someone. Yeah. So. Yeah. And one thing that the, the homeless, when I would, I kind of worked a little bit with the ministry uh, out of Venice Beach and we would go and give them sandwiches and chips and drinks. And it wasn't like, here you go and we walk on, I think what they appreciated the most is that we treated them like the human beings that they are. We had a conversations with them and spent time praying with them and asking them, what's your story? And actually listening and saying, oh, and asking questions as a result of their story. Like, oh, well, how did this happen? And oh, and then you go back, you know, the next week and you say, hey, how's it going with, with that? You know, you were telling me about this or how's it going with your your kid, I mean, a lot of them honestly had phones and stuff like that, surprisingly. Um, but they loved knowing that one, you remember their name and two, you remember their story and you would check up on them. You would check up on, hey, I prayed for you about this. How is that going now? Yeah. 
So treat people the way that you want to be treated. Amen. The yeah. golden rule. So moving on to the next fruit of the spirit, we're going to talk about faithfulness. Yeah. So the definition of faithfulness in the dictionary is remaining loyal or steadfast, and you can be relied upon. So we're. I also want to mention this: be faithful in your relationships. Yeah. Amen. In your marriage in business partnerships be faithful that is a fruit of the spirit mm -hmm. not cheating not backstabbing not going right. behind someone's back be faithful philippians 1 verse 6 says being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of jesus christ we see that jesus god he is faithful Amen. he's not a quitter he yep. is going, what he started, he started a good work in you. He is going to complete it. So we see faithfulness evident in that. Yep. Deuteronomy 31, 6 says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Notice God is faithful. He can be relied upon. He's not going to abandon you. He's not going to change. He's our constant. Mm -hmm. um, Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Once again, you can see Jesus never changes. He's faithful. And Hebrews 12, verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Once again, what he starts, he will complete. Amen. Amen. And we, uh, I, I, when I think about faithful, I always think about I led a Christian men's group in LA and we always had to, we'd have our meetings once a month and our large meetings, I should say. We had small meetings on the off weeks, but we had a guy that we would book our worship leaders. We'd always have worship and there was a guy that we called Old Faithful. And one, he was kind of the oldest of all of us, not by much, but um, but two, he was faithful. Like whenever we would call him, he would show up. We knew we could rely on him. He wasn't going to show up late. He was going to show up early. He was going to be prepared and he was going to be faithful to usher in the Holy Spirit, to bring great worship. So Nate, Nate Scoggins, he was old faithful and he was awesome. And it's funny because I looked up the definition. Yep. I looked up old fa faithful online and there was a, was it a? It's a it? geyser in yeah. Yellowstone National Park. Yeah, a geyser in Yellowstone National Park that is faithful to erupt. Was it every 20 like two. minutes to, a, to two hours? Yeah. And so people can go there and you know, if you're there for two hours, you're definitely going to see this geyser erupt. So it's faithful in doing that. It's consistent. So yes. Our next one is gentleness, and the definition of gentleness is having or showing a mild, kind, or tender temperament or character, not harsh or severe. So we're looking at calming. That's, a, that's like a quiet confidence in who you say you are in Christ Jesus, and so you're, you're not someone who is prone to get riled up and, like you know, outbursts. Yeah, have outbursts all the time. You're just calm and collective. Calm, cool, collective. That's right. And you're the type of person, perhaps, when I think about gentleness, is you're, when situations arise, you're not going to react. You're going to respond. So good. what does it look like to, you know, have a situation and react right away? That's typically where a cuss word comes out. Uh, or, you know, you hit your, you hit your finger and you're like, uh, you know, you say whatever that curse word is, you react really quick or you're in an argument and you say something that you wish you wouldn't have said because yeah. you react right away. Um, so, you know, you can't take back those words. You know, of course, a person can say, I forgive you for saying those words, but that doesn't mean they forget that you said those words or maybe you, you throw that punch right away. You, your, your instant reaction is anger and throwing that punch. So responding is always the best way to go to take a deep breath and that in that moment of just taking a deep breath the holy spirit can do so much yeah in that moment instead of you just like like zipping off the handle and responding right or in today's world reacting or sorry re reacting is what i meant to say in today's world reacting looks like going on social media right away oh my gosh and you just like you're putting out that post because you're so angry and you don't 
you react instead of respond. Take a moment. Once you put that stuff out on social media, that's another thing. You can't take it back because somebody can take a screenshot. You might be able to delete it, but somebody may have taken a screenshot. Um, or that's been out yeah. in the atmosphere and other people have seen it already. So respond instead of react. Take that deep yeah. breath. And in that deep breath, take that moment to just pray in the spirit or just ask God for wisdom. How do I deal with this um, for the best possible outcome? And I want to add here, that was a great example of words. Being yeah. gentle with your words because mm -hmm. words can hurt. Mm -hmm. Definitely. They can leave deep wounds and deep scars. And the person might forget what words you said, but it, they'll never forget how it made them feel. And words can't be taken back. So learn to be gentle with your words and think about what you're going to say before you actually say it. Take some time. That way you don't end up regretting what you're going to say. Yeah. Yep. And I don't know what we're getting out here. I don't know how this is gentle, loving them too much to leave them where they're at. But. Yeah, I mean, what we're trying to get out with that note is when you see someone who's making poor decisions, we don't want to judge them or rebuke them harshly. We want to do it gently, which is what yeah. we talked about um, Above, earlier yeah. in 2 Timothy 4, verse 2. It says, Correct and rebuke your people when they need it. Encourage them to do right and all the time be feeding them patiently. Like to me, none of that means like it's harsh or rash, but it's just, you know, being uh, gentle and patient. Yeah. I know a lot of these words are kind of like we are using them interchangeably, but yeah. that's because all the fruits of the spirit are interchangeable. And they work very well. Where together. you have one, you tend to have the other. Yeah. So I mean, you're gentle with somebody by doing exactly that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, pointing those arrows, those errors out to people in that loving way, I mean, it's, it's always good to steer people away from the route that they're on, because a lot of people in this world, if you don't point these things out in gentleness, you can certainly do that, the, their GPS is taking them to hell. You wanna help to reroute them yeah, that's good. to heaven, because, you know, you may only get one chance with some people. So you never know when they're gonna take their last breath and then you might just be thinking, man, I, I could have said something, I could have done something and now it's too late. Like they're no longer with us. So it's important to, to do that and do that in gentleness. Um, mm -hmm. So don't, don't be uh, in a situation where you have that what if in your life. What if I would have done, what if I would have tried that? when I had the chance. Right. So and we have Galatians 6.1 is a great scripture to look at for this. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently, but watch yourselves or you also may be tempted. So there's that word gently. That's what came to mind for me when we started to look at this word gently. I instantly thought of that scripture, restore them gently. Um, so because a lot of times if you come at them in a harsh way, they're just going to be offended and you're not going to accomplish anything. So restore them gently. Um, and then we have uh, Matthew 16, 10 is another great scripture to go with this. Be wise as a serpent, gentle or harmless, innocent as a dove. So that's right. Wise as a serpent, gentle as a dove. Okay. Last one. Self-control. So not self, an easy one, but no self-control is when you don't allow yourself to fold to sin. Amen. So Matthew 26 verse 41 part B says for the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Yeah. All right. So this is exactly what we talked about in Galatians five, when it says that our, the two natures in us, our sinful nature and the Holy spirit wanting to change us are in constant battle with each other. Yeah. That's the spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing to show all these fruits of the spirit, but the flesh is weak because we've got our selfish, carnal, fleshly nature that's, yeah. that we're having to fight against. So what you feed out of those two options, your spirit and your flesh, is what's going to be stronger. Yeah. If you feed your spirit, your spirit's going to be stronger. If you feed your fleshly desires, your flesh is going to be stronger. And what's going to trump the other one? Whichever you feed. Yeah. 
So yep. if you aren't liking your fleshly desires acting out and your carnal flesh wrong desires, then starve those desires and they will die. Yep. If you keep feeding it, you are nourishing it and those desires will continue. Yep. If you starve them, they will die, just like we see yep. in the natural. And in a vulnerable moment, I just feel the need to even throw this out there. I've talked about in some of my other videos um, like most men, I had a time in my life where I struggled with pornography. It was a massive struggle. And so the more, and, and you know, with pornography, usually sin gets worse and worse. Mm. So it's like the bottom rung of the ladder, you know, maybe isn't porn, but then maybe that's the third rung. But then before you know it, it it's, it's sex, it's meaningless sex and hooking up and whatever that may be. But you... The more you do that, the more you want that. So the hungrier, the more you feed your flesh, the hungrier it gets. That's good. And it's in specific sin too. The more you feed that, that sin of pornography, the more you're going to want it. Every idle moment you get, you're going to want to do that. So you have to starve that. Don't give your flesh what it wants. Don't give it that sin because it's just going to want it more. It's going to gorge on that sin. And again, it can get worse and worse to where it's not just porn. And I'm, I don't want to say just porn because that's, yeah, it's a big deal. Right. That, I mean, that it's, but I was able to starve that. I, I got accountability in that area. That's self-control. You can be helped with self-control by getting accountability. One of my accountability partners was my pastor, you know, so I had to check in with my pastor. You want to know who my accountability partner is now? That's right. I want my wife to check in on me. She's about to leave for a trip. And I'm like, babe, will you check in with me? I know that I have had a lot of sobriety in this area. I haven't slipped up in this area for a very long time, but I want you to check in on me because I want to know that I'm going to have to be accountable to you. My pastor from LA is still one of my accountability partners and we talk every week. So if you want to get freedom in an area, you need accountability. Um, because quite honestly, you're too weak to do it on your own. Right. You need accountability. Most importantly, you need God. So he's your strength and he can find a way out for you. He'll give you the strength you need to overcome that temptation. So not only are you starving that sin so that you can have self-control so that you starve that out, but you also, when that area of sin begins to empty out, you need to fill it with something. Yes, that's and good. that's filling it with the God, with the word of God, filling it with that relationship with Christ Jesus, taking up more of him, more time in prayer, more time in the word, more time saying those scriptures over and over and over again. That's right. So confess that you have self-control. Yeah. Christ gave you that freedom from sin. He broke the shackles mm of sin that were on your life when he went to the cross, they, that sin no longer has power over you. The, it's when you, are, when you the Jesus has freed you and you are free indeed. When he died on the cross and said, it is finished, he said, it is finished to my people being enslaved to sin. They will no longer be enslaved to sin because I have died for that sin. That's so, so good, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, James 4, 7 says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Amen. So yeah, he's going to try to come along and tempt you. That's what he does. Yeah. But if you resist him, he will flee from you in Jesus' name. So yeah. it's a choice. Self-control is a choice. Yeah. We're all presented with the opportunity to cave in, but we also have the opportunity to rise up. And I, so. I want to add to that because one thing that always stood out to me is that he will flee from you. Sometimes you need to flee from him too. And I mean, that, I learned that even with one of the, the, the enemy's greatest weapons is idle time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, yeah, I would be at home working. I mean, I would be working on my computer by myself. Nobody's at home. That's when that temptation came up the most to go to websites I shouldn't go to. So I could resist the devil, but I was still in the same circumstances at home by myself where he was putting that the imagery in my head and whatever. And sometimes I had to flee yeah, and get out of my situation and be in an idle time where he was overly trying to tempt me. I could text my accountability, whatever, but sometimes my accountability would text back and say, Hey, why don't you just get out of your place, get out of your situation, your circumstances yeah. of this idle time, flee from him. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Cause I had tried other things like 
oh, I'm resisting him and I'm going to put some worship music on. And sometimes that did, I'll be honest, sometimes that didn't even work. And I just, in, in wisdom, I just need to be like, I'm just going to flee. My roommate will be home later. It'll be a better situation for me. So, yeah. sorry, I just wanted That's to add good. to that because I always saw he will flee from you, but sometimes you need to flee from him in that temptation. Meaning get yourself out of those tempting situations. Yeah. So whether that's in your bedroom with your boyfriend and girlfriend, yeah. like that's gonna be hard to have self control because we're putting your you're putting yourself in that situation. Yeah. Where you don't have to. Or if you are struggling with masturbation, like we have both struggled with in the mm-hmm. past and got free from. Um, when you keep doing it, you're going to keep craving it. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that the second you feel that craving, you need to go up to your room and close the door. Like, no, how about you go down to the living room where the rest of your family is yeah. and, or get a hobby going. That way you distract yourself. Yeah. It's like you do not have to listen to your flesh. We do realize that we have a choice. And we do realize that in the past we just made the wrong choice, but that doesn't mean that that dictates the pe- the future choices that we're going to make. Yeah. Just confess over yourself, I have self-control in Jesus' name. Amen. That's a fruit of the Spirit. So self-control in all areas, whether it's sexually, whether it's eating your food, if you're a binge eater, like you can... Yeah. Say, I have self-control over that area or yeah. whatever it is. And you can call the devil out and you can say, no, devil, I won't do that. I don't need to do that. Christ Jesus has given me this freedom. And you can begin to quote scriptures to the devil. Mm-hmm. Speak the life yep, and, that's and what remind Jesus him did. that he's been defeated. Yeah, that's what Jesus did in Matthew 4 when the devil came to tempt Jesus in the wilderness. Yeah. Jesus quoted scripture back at him when Satan was trying to tempt Jesus. So that's how we need to fight our battles here. Um, But self-control is self-discipline. Like self-discipline is doing what is right, whether you feel like doing it or not. So reading the word, spending time in prayer, going to church, those are right things to do whether you feel like it or not. If you say, I don't feel like reading my Bible today, suck it up, buttercup. That's what's going to save you. Yep. That's what's going to refine you. doesn't matter if you feel like it. Your flesh it is not going to feel like it. The devil is going to try to make you not feel like it so that you do not read your Bible because then you will not grow and then you are easier to tempt and then you will fall into destruction. Yeah. It's a cycle. Yeah. I've been there. That's why I can say this because I've experienced it and I don't want you to fall in the same trap. Yeah. So doing what you know will help you grow spiritually is self-control. So whether you feel like praying or not, whether you feel like reading your Bible or not, it doesn't matter what you feel like doing. Do what you know will help you grow spiritually. Because self-control is not about listening to what you feel like doing, but knowing and doing what you ought to do. Because what to know and not to do is not to know. If you're like, yeah, I know I need to read my Bible I know I need to go to church, but then you never read your Bible and you never go to church, then that means you don't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. So self-control is just got to be real with yourself. Admit to yourself, I am struggling with this area. Yeah. If you're in denial about something, it's going to be really hard to fix that circumstance and get a grip on it. Yeah. So self-control is being real with yourself and setting up a game plan and getting those scriptures and and playing out if this temptation comes to me, how am I going to defeat it? Yeah. You got to come up with a, a strategy. Otherwise, you're just going to succumb to it every time. So. Yeah. And I always like looking at it, like comparing what you just mentioned. You know, I don't feel like reading my Bible today. I don't feel like praying today. I don't feel like going to Bible study or church today. You know, that can go from one day to the next. And what we're looking at is this, your spirit inside you. Your spirit will start to starve. Just like you can starve the flesh and make the flesh weak, you can starve the spirit and make the spirit within you yep. weak because you're not feeding it the word of God. Your spirit is malnourished and getting it, you're, you're becoming weak spiritually when you're not 
feeding yourself the Word of God, feeding yourself yeah. uh, time with God in prayer and things like that. I, you can look at it in the same way, a great way to look at it, that starved spirit inside you that's weak, and I just picture this pale, like... Shriveled. Yeah, shriveled. Look at, your, look at the physicality side of things. If I decide I don't feel like eating today, and what happens is that becomes not just that one time or that one day that becomes in the spirit. It can become the next day. It gets easier and easier to not read your Bible, easier and easier to not pray, Apathetic easier and easier. Yeah, yeah. Same way with, eh, I don't feel like eating today. And imagine if you said that every day. Or working out. Yeah. And then I was going to say that. So starving yourself of eating every day, you're going to start looking pretty pale, malnourished. Your face is going to start to suck in, you know, or on the flip side, I don't feel like working out today. And, you know, I don't really feel like eating right today. Well, what's going to happen is you're going to get heavier and heavier on the couch. You're going to experience more and more pains because you're not working out. Now my lower back hurts. And, oh, man, I tried to lift this and I pulled something to my arm. And, you know, you're mm. going to end up being someone that you're not proud of that's on the couch every day feeding yourself all the wrong things. So... Self-discipline, it goes that way in the spirit and in the physical, but really here we're focusing mm -hmm. on, the, on the spirit, but I wanted to give you that visual of the physical. Sometimes we can visual the physical a little bit more easy. You didn't end up being that heavy person on the couch because you didn't go to the gym right. one day. It was the next day and the next day and the next day, and it became easier not to do it. The more you don't do it, the easier it is not to do it. So it doesn't happen overnight. So yeah, first Corinthians nine verses 25 through 27, it says all athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. Amen. So I run with purpose in every step. I'm not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Yep. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I might myself be disqualified. Yeah. yeah, athletes are among the most disciplined people on the planet. Mm -hmm. Like, really, though. But I love that because they're doing it. Olympic athletes train their whole lives for the Olympics to to win a medal that will rust. Yeah. That yeah. to to make a record that will get beat by someone else in the in the future. Yeah. But we are training ourselves for an eternal prize to bring as many people to Jesus as we possibly can. Yeah. And we're talking about reading our Bibles and going to church and praying because these are ways that we can discipline our bodies, our flesh, our spirit yeah. right here, right now for an eternal prize for bringing other people to Jesus where they will have an eternal result. Yep. So he's saying like, I don't care what you're feeling in the natural. You better be doing something to make your spirit strong. So I thought that was That's super, right. super good. Yeah. How much more important your spirit, which lives for eternity. Yeah. Your body will be in the grave someday, but your spirit lives for eternity. So, mm -hmm. you know, seek that out and be self-disciplined in feeding your spirit and growing your spirit. That's so good. Um, so, yeah, we, we didn't just do this so that you could just be like, well, that was a great fuzzy feeling. I'm so happy we looked at the fruits of the Spirit. I don't want to, I don't really care to remember this. I didn't take any notes. No, we did this so that you can apply this to your life. That's what you do with the Word of God is yeah. you don't just read it, check it off the list and let everybody know, I read my Bible today. I, you know, this is day uh, 150 in my YouVersion Bible app. I've been consistent. No, apply it to your life. That's why we specifically looked at the fruits of the Spirit so that you can now look at that checklist and say, yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I definitely need to work on that area and I need to work on that area. It's about striving to be Christ-like. Jesus represented all of the fruits of the Spirit better than anyone ever will that ever walks this earth. So be like that Paul who has joy even though he does, perhaps doesn't have happiness, he has joy. The joy of the Lord was in him as he was in that prison cell. Look at all those fruits of the Spirit. And, you know, maybe you want to make yourself a checklist of all the fruits of the Spirit. And at the end of the day, rate yourself. On a scale of 1 to 10, how did I do in the area of joy today? On the area, uh, uh, how did I do in the area of self-discipline today? 
you know, and rate yourself every day and work on that. Not only rate yourself, but be like, what can I do better tomorrow so that I don't get a num a one out of 10 sure. in this area? That's how you grow. That's how you apply the word of God. You have to be self-disciplined enough to check yourself every day and say, how am I doing in the area of love, in the area of any of those areas? So, um, and we finally, we want to look at one more scripture before we end. James 1, 23 through 25 says, Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. So that's so powerful and that's really what I just said. We're not, we're not trying to do this so we can say, well, God, I read, I read, I read a chapter today. I, I did good. No, it's like, allow that to be a mirror image. Allow that to change, you. change your reflection, to renew your mind so that every time you read it, you're radiating Christ's light a little bit more. You're, you're glowing a little bit more. I know that, you know, one of the best compliments you can get is you're glowing. What's different about you? I know Jazz has heard that before. I've heard that before. Um, and it's, it's the word of God that causes you to glow. It's your walk with Christ Jesus that causes you to glow and radiate his love and have that joy. So allow the word to change you, not to be something that's your, just your checklist, let it change you and renew your mind day by day. Yeah, I know that if you clicked on this video, you might have expected, oh, we're talking about the fruits of the Spirit, and we're just going to be like whimsical, frolicking through the flowers, <laughs> yeah, exactly. and it's all wonderful. But it's like, no, we talked about the fruits of the Spirit, and if we aren't ex exemplifying these in our lives, we got some work to do, so let's get busy, people. Mm -hmm. But uh, thank you guys so, so much for tuning in, and please apply this to your life, uh, the Word of God. When you allow the Holy Spirit to control your life, then the fruits of the Spirit will start being expressed through you. So hopefully yeah. this helped you. Thank you for tuning in with us today. And yeah. So yes, before we do our closing, I want to remind you, go check out that video we posted last week on what is love. Definitely. Um, that it was an awesome video. We had a really great time with it and you really get a clear definition of what love is, especially according to the word of God. So, but if you jo enjoyed today's video, do us a huge favor, share it on your social media, want to get the gospel of peace, the good news of the gospel out to as many people as possible. Copy it, share it with a friend in a text message, whatever you got to do. We'd appreciate that because we, again, just want to grow the gospel for Jesus. We want people to be saved. We want to see, we want to save souls, grow souls, and thrive souls. That is our goal, James and Jazz. Um, and we also want to encourage you uh, to go to jamesandjazz.com, click on that videos tab, and check out our three different sections of videos. Um, we don't just do videos on spirituality, but our first section of videos you'll see there is spiritual videos. And we have done a lot of topical stuff. We do Bible study with us. So we did the whole book of James. We did the whole book of John. So where we go through individual chapters and really break them down to get the meat out of those. Instead of just the milk, we want you to grow with that that prime steak. steak. It's good stuff. So we encourage you to check out those other spiritual videos. Our second section of videos is physically fit videos. So we want to also make sure that you are healthy physically, as we just talked about a little bit ago. We want to help you to be self-disciplined in that area, and we're trying to make it easy on you. So we do workouts at home. You could do them in the gym as well, but we show you full-length workouts so you can follow along with us. Um, using dumbbells, using resistance bands. We also do some stuff with kettlebell. We do some cardio in place. So we're showing you exactly what to do. We, we, we make it foolproof, y'all. So um, a lot of people I know say, I just, I'd love to work out, I just don't know what to do. I don't know what exercises to do. So try these, I think you'll really enjoy them. If you're like, I don't have time to do a whole 20, 30, 45 minute workout with you. Well, great news, y'all. We also do 
exercise demonstration videos where we show you the exercises that you can do with those pieces yes. of equipment. You can take notes or take screenshots and do them on your own time. So I think you'll really enjoy those. It'll help you to grow physically as well. And then our final section is life and relationship videos. The life part is us showing you what does James and Jazz's life look like? How can you get to know us better? Some monumental moments, some stuff I think you'll really enjoy uh, that'll help you to get, a, get to know us better. So check that out. And then the second part of that is relationships. We want you to be relationally healthy as well, to be strong in your relationships. So we show you the good, the bad, and the ugly things that we've learned to have healthy relationships. So uh, check out that life and relationship section. And if you wanna be in the loop on when we're posting new videos, um, we encourage you follow our social media. We always let you know there. So if you go to jamesandjazz.com, check the top and the bottom, you're going to see that we have social media icons there, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Be sure to follow us, like us, and subscribe to our YouTube. Yes. And if you scroll to the bottom of our website, jamesandjazz.com, you'll see where you can subscribe to our email list. Mm -hmm. So you can be in the know with all things going on. Right next to that is how you can book us to speak at an event, whether it might be a church or school or a conference. Give us the details and we'll get back to you. And then at the top of our website, jamesandjazz.com, you will see the donate tab. Yeah. Um, thank you for praying for our ministry first and foremost. Secondly though, if you feel led to partner with us financially, we wanna give you that opportunity. And obviously no pressure or obligation because we give all our videos to you for free just because we want you to be the best version of yourself you can possibly be. But we are also normal people and we have bills and we'd love to do this full time and give you high quality content. Yeah. So $5 helps, $50 helps. Um, so there, all information is on that donate tab on how you can partner with us via PayPal, Venmo, or Patreon. And thank you so much. And right next to the donate tab is the courses tab. So for all my Christian ladies out there, interested in becoming and developing that into that Proverbs 31 woman that God designed you to be, check out that tab. I will keep uploading courses as time allows, but check that out for yourself for sure. All right. Well, we thank you guys so much, and we look forward to seeing you back at jamesandjazz.com, growing spiritually, physically, and relationally. Thank you all so much. Take her easy.